Hey everybody, this is Joel Toppin here, and something I wanted to do for some time is to create a series of videos that uh, provide some instruction on how to create Vassal modules. So there's documentation out there for creating Vassal modules from scratch, uh, but the documentation takes some time to sift through, and it's not always uh, straightforward or easy to understand. So what I'm going to do in these YouTube videos is I'm going to show you how I go about building modules. Uh, first of all, um, the method that I will show you is what I tend to be comfortable with. It may not be the best way. There may be better ways, other shortcuts out there, but this is the way that I build my modules. First thing you want to do before you start building a module is you need, obviously need to have the graphics. And uh, some people will ask the question, well, how do I prepare the graphics? So this first video, I'm going to show you how, to, how I go about doing that. Uh, what I've got here is I've got a free graphics program. You could do this with Photoshop or any of the other uh, graphics programs out there, but uh, I'm going to be using a free program called GIMP, spelled G-I-M-P. It's a pretty robust program. I mean, for a free program, it does an awful lot. Uh, what I'm going to do here, since I'm building the Vassal module for the final uh, version uh, of Navajo Wars, uh, the game's going to print here pretty soon, and I've got the final artwork, and it's time to build the module. So I'm going to use that as my test bed for these videos. First thing you want to do when you're building a module is you need to get the graphics, you need to get the map, cards, counters, and so forth. One of the earliest mistakes that a player can make or a designer can make in uh, designing a module is getting graphics that don't uh, uh, match one another. What I mean by that is you need to make sure that the counter images are scaled to the images that uh, you're using for the map and that the card images are going to scale to the playing surface that you're going to use inside the Vassal module. So I've got here a JPEG of the map that we're going to use and then I've got the counter sheets here and uh, what I'm going to do with the counter sheets is I'm just going to take a sample I just made a using my selection tool in GIMP. I've drawn the a selection. I want to make sure my pieces are square. One thing that annoys me is Vassal modules where the designer didn't use uh, the same template for each counter and you have different counter sizes. Some are off a pixel or, or two pixels on on either axes. That's, that's real sloppy work. Uh, so what I do is I make sure that the dimensions are equal when I'm dealing with square pieces. So what I've got done here is I've selected one of the counters. I'm not using I'm, I'm using the black border as a uh, a rough template, but I'm going to clean that up here in just a moment. And uh, I've made sure that the dimensions of my selection are equal. It's 87 by 87 pixels. I usually don't want to go any bigger than that with a with a vassal module. Otherwise, you end up with unnecessarily large pieces. So this is what I'm starting with, and I'll just do a Control C or Command C if you're using a Mac and uh, copy that to the clipboard and then I take my map over here and the piece that I've uh, selected from the uh, from the counter sheet is going to need to go on these square spaces here and so I'm going to paste that in here and it looks like it fits just perfectly so uh, I, I was able to luck out there and the graphic for the counter is going to match the map perfectly so I know I don't need to do any other work uh, as far as resizing the counters. If you do have to resize counters and you're dealing with an entire counter sheet, you'll want to resize the entire counter sheet rather than uh, each counter individually. It'll take you forever to do that. Uh, so this is a little bit of a time saver. All right, so I can go ahead and close this out. I'm not going to save that graphic. Um, now that I know my, my counters are going to ma match the map okay, now I'm going to select them and cut them out of the sheet. As you can see here, I have an entire sheet. This is the front side of the graphics. In Vassal, every image has to have its own file. So each of these images here on this first couple rows of the Vassal module, or excuse me, of the counter sheet here, uh, are, are an individual counter uh, that has a unique graphic face to it. So I'm going to have to have an individual file for every single one of these counters. Now coming over here to the sheep, it's the same image is used on a number of different counters. So I only need to make one of these and then I can replicate it in the, the Vassal module for the number of times uh, 
that I need for the, ver the, the game that I'm working with. In this case, I have to have eight sheep counters, and so I can take that image and replicate it uh, eight times within Vassal. So that makes the graphic preparation here pretty simple. Same thing with the drought counters, the corn. Uh, it's just the unique pieces, like the instruction counters, where each uh, face is a different image. Those are the ones that I have to make sure that I, I cut them out and make an individual graphic for it. So, once I've done all that, I'll go ahead and start selecting these. Now in GIMP, once I've done, drawn a selection, I can actually use a move tool by pressing the M button, and then I make sure that I have it uh, set to uh, move the selection. You can move a layer, you can move a path, or you can move your actual selection. By setting it to move selection means I can actually drag the, the marching ants selection box over to the next slot on the graphic image. Now remember, a JPEG is a flat image, so I just drag that over there. I could draw another X, another square over this this next counter, uh, but that would be much more time consuming. It's easier just to get it set right and then use the move tool to move it over and then do a command C or a control C depending on your operating system. And then I have a, a, a shortcut that will, there's a, a menu selection you can go to here in GIMP, I'm sure he has this with Photoshop, where I can create a new image file from what is on the clipboard. And so I'll just go ahead and do that, and voila, there we are. There's counter G, it's in its own image. And uh, once I've done like a couple rows of these, then I'll go back and I'll save these individually with their own file name. Now, I said I could do something more fancy with the borders. I'm gonna expand this so you can see this counter better. I'm gonna zoom way in like 500% so we can see this really well. As you can see the border around the counter is kind of ragged. So what I'm going to want to do with that, if I want the counter to be square, I can do that. If I want it rounded, I can do that. I like to use rounded counters in this game. It's more time consuming for the vassal prep, but it, here in GIMP there is a uh, way that you can turn your selection into rounded corners and I'll set the radius to 8. I think that's a nice uh, clipped corner size. So I go ahead and I select the entire thing. And then I have a keyboard shortcut I made to uh, cause my selection to be reduced. I can shrink the selection by a number of pixels. And I'm going to reduce it by two. A one to two pixel border is more than adequate. All right, so now I've selected uh, this, this thing and it's reduced. The selection has been reduced by two. If I do a command I, that's going to invert my selection. So now I've, I've selected everything uh, that was not selected just a moment ago. That is namely the border area around the counter. I then take my paint tool and make sure my color is set to black or whatever color you want for the border. In this case I'm going to use black and then I'm going to use the flood tool which is I want to say uh, shift B here in GIMP and I'm going to set it to fill the entire selection. So whatever I have selected here it's going to fill it regardless of what color was there previously and then when I click in there bingo the whole uh, rounded part of the counter is uh, uh, already set for me so it's all filled in next I do a another command I to re-invert now I have selected just the yellow portion everything but that black border I painted and I'm gonna choose to grow my selection by two which will select everything except for the nibs on the counters I do another command I and then I can delete and so what that does is it creates transparency around the corners and that's how you make yourself a rounded counter. It is time consuming. So if you're not interested in spending that kind of time, here's a real simple way to do it. Let me use this other counter here. We select the entire image and we're not going to use the rounded corners here so I'll turn that off. I'll just reduce the selection by two. I will invert so that I'm selecting only the two hex border around the counter. I use the flood tool, make sure my color is set to black, set the flood tool to fill everything, the whole selection, and then I click in there and bingo, there you go. You got a counter with a nice uniform border around it. That's going to make your module look really clean. If you have uh, ragged looking counters, your module is going to look crummy. If you, if you take the time beforehand to prepare all your counters and make them look nice, your module is going to look really nice in the end and users will be appreciative. 
So this is lesson number one, how to prepare your graphics. Uh, you'll want to do this for your cards. If you're dealing with a game with cards, uh, you'll do it for your counters. And again, make sure that you, you resize your graphics so that uh, if you're dealing with cards that got to go on top of a map, make sure they fit the spaces that they're going to go into. Same thing with the counters. Uh, do that all before you start. Once you have all your counters done, and this is the, probably the most tedious and time-consuming part of Vassal uh, module creation, but once you have this done, the rest of it is going to go much, much smoother. So in our next video, we'll start to actually work with the Vassal software, and we'll begin to plug these graphics that we prepared into that module. One more thing that I did forget to mention that I think uh, I ought to mention in this first lesson uh, before we move on is uh, what kind of file formats you want to work with. Uh, Vassal is going to work really well with PNG files or, or ping files as, as some people call them. You can use GIFs but GIFs is not a very good format. It's not, not real clean. You can use it but I prefer to use PNG or JPEG. JPEG, however, does have one thing you need to be aware of, and that is it does not uh, deal with transparency at all. So if you're dealing with any round counters where you need uh, the, the, the portion around the counter to be transparent, you need to make sure that you save it as a ping file or a PNG file. So, for example, here in this, I've got to make a rounded counter and if I went a little fast last time let me I'll do this a little bit slower so you can see once more uh, what I do is I draw my my border around the entire counter I make sure that there, it's a rounded corner uh, box rectangle and I choose to reduce the selection by two and then I use the invert to select the border area around it and then I use the flood set it to fill whole selection and bingo, there you go. I reinvert so it selects everything but the black border. I resize it up by two. I reinvert so it's just selecting the nibs around the edges and then delete. And then what I'll have to do here in GIMP is I'll need to export that file and I'll save this one. Let's see, this is counter E. So I'll save it under a name that I can find later on. This is uh, another thing that's kind of important. Don't use names that um, I try to use a standard kind of name for different pieces, uh, that way I can find them later. So in this case I'm dealing with Spanish instruction counters, so I named the file SP and then underscore instra underscore and then the letter uh, identifier. So in this case here it was E, so all I got to do is change that to an E there. And I'm saving it as a ping file, I hit OK. A little pop-up window will ask me some other things about the default settings in GIMP are just fine. So I hit S export and there we go. Uh, you can save in, in GIMP and I'm assuming with Photoshop and others there may be an internal uh, Photoshop file or in this case a GIMP uh, file format. Um, don't You don't want to save it that as that because for example in GIMP you can save the file as an XTF file. Uh, you, you really don't want to do that because then Vassal can't use that. So whenever you're closing one of these files, after, after you've done an export here in GIMP, you'll want to close it without saving because you're not going to want to use that, uh, that format. See, XCF is the internal uh, GIMP file format, and that's not usable by Vassal. So what I'll do, to, I'll, I'll close that out without saving. So that's the graphics preparation, and again, that's probably the most tedious part of module creation. But if you do it right and do it nice, your module's going to look really nice at the end.